let me know if any of these sound familiar. Now, your puppy won't stop biting the kids. Your puppy nips at your kids while they play in the yard. Your puppy jumps on the kids and bites them while they're trying to watch TV on the couch. Your kids can't play on the floor anymore because the puppy constantly jumps all over them, nipping and biting. You're in the right place if you're looking for solutions to stop your puppy from biting your kids. Now, let's dive into six tips you can apply today and a few tools that are gonna help your puppy and your kids live happily ever after. First, I want you to know that your kids are often an easy target for puppies because kids are low to the ground. They make erratic movements and they have high squeaky tones, which excite puppies. Kids flail their arms and hands in an attempt to push the puppy away or get them to stop jumping or nipping. And probably most importantly, your kids smell super good to your puppy. Kids also have a lot of energy and your puppy definitely feeds off their environment. Kids are very exciting to puppies, so it makes sense that your dog will gravitate towards the kids. They're gonna ignore your cues, the toys, and even anyone else in the room. Now the other thing to keep in mind is the kids accidentally reinforce the puppy's behavior a lot. When kids look at or touch or talk to your dog, this is reinforcing, even though they want the biting to stop. Sometimes one family member seems to be the target for biting more often than others. This boils down to how that one family member is interacting with the dog. If it's inconsistent or misleading, or they've been accidentally rewarding the puppy for the behavior that they're trying to stop, this is gonna lead to more biting towards that particular person. Now, puppies also bite when they're overtired and overstimulated. It's not that they're stubborn or a bad dog. Now I bet you know when your kids are overtired and overstimulated. And I also bet you see a difference in their behavior when that happens too. An overtired puppy who is feeding off your kid's energy can be a recipe for disaster. I have more on how to tell if the biting is happening because of an overtired behavior in this video on puppy biting. Now you can check that out after you watch the video here. The link is going to be in the description below. All right, let's start with tip number six on how to manage the kids and the puppy who bites them. Well, you're going to be teaching two different learners here. So really, you're going to be doing double duty as you teach both the kids and your puppy how to interact together. And your puppy is like an infant with shark teeth. They do not know that biting hurts or what they should do differently. And your kids likely see an adorable fluff ball and just want to cuddle it. Unfortunately, most puppies eight weeks and older don't cuddle on demand like adult dogs do. And even many adult dogs prefer to cuddle on their own terms or not at all. This can be really disappointing for kids who imagine puppies ownership going a whole lot different. Now we have to teach the kids to be inviters, not invaders when it comes to approaching a puppy. This also includes recognizing signals our dogs give off to indicate they're uncomfortable with being touched, approached, or even picked up. Now inside our online training program, we have a robust section on canine body language and communication. I believe every dog owner should know how to read their dog's body language and understand what their dog is communicating. Unfortunately though, social media and the programs your kids watch on TV, like cartoons, humanize most of what we see in our dogs, misrepresenting what the dog is actually feeling. This means we have a whole lot of people misunderstanding what their dog is actually saying. Now this leads to a lot of dogs biting their humans, including the kids. Then everyone wonders why the dog all of the sudden bit someone. It's never all of the sudden. Dogs don't ever go from zero to bite without first giving all sorts of subtle signals, such as lip licks, whale eyes, head turns, tail tucks, and just leaning away. These signals are all subtle, so kids would not likely know about them or be able to tell if the dog is saying, no thank you, or you're causing me some stress right now. In addition to the canine body language lessons in our program, if you don't already have this book, I highly recommend it. It's something that you can review with your children if they're old enough to understand. It's by Lily Chin and it's got some great examples of canine body language and what it means. I'll put a link to it under the description below under the product recommendations so you can check it out. All right, moving on to tip number five. Kids under seven should probably not interact with a puppy without an adult present. Kids are just too unpredictable and so are puppies. Putting them together without 100% supervision is asking for trouble. So use baby gates and puppy pens to keep your kids and your puppy separated while you can't watch them. Now, one of our students, she even got creative with the puppy pen and the grandkids got in it to be able to play on the floor without the puppy jumping all over them. Another student put a puppy pen around the couch so the kids could sit and watch TV without their puppy jumping up and nipping and stealing the snacks. Preventing the biting from happening is the first step we take in breaking the habit. So you may need to get creative with how you prevent this biting. All right, tip number 
before. Teach the kids when it's the right time to interact with the puppy. Puppies have wake windows, which is the appropriate amount of time they should be awake based on their age. Now I do go over this in detail in my course. I will link that below in case you want to learn more. So at the beginning of the wake window, the puppy probably has a lot of energy. And this is a good time for more physical play like fetch or chase. At the end of a wake window, the puppy is getting tired. So this is a good time for some calming activities like licking and chewing. Now in the middle of the wake window, that's probably the best time for your kids to interact with your puppy and you'll see less biting. That sweet spot in the wake window might only last for a few minutes though. That will get longer as your puppy grows and matures. All right, tip number three. This is a good one if you want the kids and puppy to interact without anyone getting nipped. Now we do recommend that you use the right tools and toys that keep kids away from the puppy. So I'm gonna give you my full list in a minute, but the two best ones are the flirt pole and a long rope toy. Now these toys keep puppy teeth away from kids' hands and provide a safe and healthy way to engage with the puppy. Now if you don't want to get all the tools on my list, that's totally fine. But I definitely definitely recommend these two. Okay, next up, number two. I know your kids want to be able to play some of the training games we share in our course with their new puppy. So I want you to first learn the game so you can help establish some good behaviors and skills with your puppy. Then you're going to teach your kids the training games to interact with their puppy. This helps the puppy learn that there are different ways to interact with the kids. Sometimes it's play, other times it's listening and learning. One that I like to start with when kids are involved is bump it. Now it's an easy game for the puppy to learn and the kids usually get the mechanics down pretty quickly. And it does teach the puppy an alternative behavior instead of using his mouth to bite. This game is in our online course so you can find it there if you're already enrolled. And if you're not enrolled, you are missing out on all the fun. All right, check out the link below for the details on the awesome guide to puppy training. Now, my number one best tip when it comes to puppies and kids is advocate for your puppy. Help your puppy learn what you want him to do. Help the kids learn to respect his communication. Help your kids learn if it's the right time to interact and to check frequently for signs of consent from the puppy and that the interaction is going well for everyone. Now when the puppy sees that you're stepping in to stop unwanted attention from the kids, he's going to learn that he doesn't have to escalate his communication and that's going to help him feel more comfortable. This also leads to the puppy looking to you for support and guidance, which helps when the training games start and then he's ready to learn from you. All right, there are some other tools that I want you to add to your shopping list or put on the radar that's going to help with biting. All right, we talked about this one. Number one, the flirt pole. It's a long pole with a long rope and a lure or toy that's attached to the end. This is going to allow your pup to chase and bite at something far enough away from those little hands. So be sure to instruct your kids not to make the puppy jump to get the lure though. The lure should really be swept across the ground. Repeated jumping can actually damage growing puppy bones, joints, and growth plates. And a puppy with a broken leg from a jumping injury is going to be even worse than a puppy nipping at the kids. I can promise you that. You're going to want to also add a crate, a pen, and a baby gate or two to your list. Now these are great ways to keep your puppy and your kids separated and safe from each other. Besides, your puppy is going to need some downtime and lots of rest. So the crate is the best place for your puppy to nap and sleep at night. Of course you're going to need training tips. And the very first place to go to grab one of our free games before you even join our pain program is in the free new puppy starter kit. We do have a game called Puppy Pivots. This is going to be used to get your pup to turn away from anything, including your kids, and tune into you. I also want you to add the Adapto plug-in diffuser. It's essential for creating a more relaxing environment for your anxious puppy. The pheromone it gives off is similar to the one the mama dog gives off to calm her pups. Now I also want you to work on adding in a puppy journal or puppy schedule. This is going to be critical in helping you remember what happened and when. This means you can also see more patterns of behavior the more notes you take. You could see that your puppy is biting the kids more in the afternoon after they get home from school. And from there, you'd want to switch up the schedule or engage with your pup in a different activity to prevent the biting from happening. Now I do recommend that you add a long rope toy to your shopping list because this could be another great way for your pup to engage with the kids but keep those sharp teeth far enough away from little hands and feet. Add to the list licking mats. They're an ideal tool to use when your pup is in the pen and you need to keep them occupied while you're working on something with the kids like making dinner or giving bedtime baths. Now there's another extremely important tip I almost forgot. Whatever you do, do not scold your puppy for biting your kids. Hitting your dog or yelling at them for biting does not teach your dog what you want them to do differently. Instead, it causes a breakdown in trust and causes your dog to fear human presence. This includes your kids. Biting can actually increase the more we try to use aversive techniques 
techniques to correct it. Instead, work on bite prevention. Give your pup alternative activities to engage in. Watch that schedule in case your pup is getting overstimulated or overtired and focus on creating a new set of behaviors you want your dog to do in the presence of your kids. All right, this is Michelle, your favorite dog trainer, signing off for now.